Hey everyone, this is CJ Gross, founder of Ascension Worldwide, and I'm coming to you today to talk about the very important question of why is diversity important in the world of art? And so the person I'm gonna be interviewing today, good friend of mine, Chris Wilson, he's an entrepreneur, a social enterpriser. He is the author of The Master Plan, My, My Life's Journey from Prison to life's purpose, and he's also a renowned artist. Uh, Chris, uh, just before we get started and really answering questions about art and diversity, could you just share a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your background? Absolutely. So thanks, thanks for having me here today. Uh, my background, uh, I've went to prison, and I have to start with that. When I was a juvenile, I was attacked, me and my mom, and we were stalked and I lost, you know, some family members, some friends. And one day some people came after me. I ended up taking a person's life. I was charged as an adult and sentenced to natural life in prison. I ended up, you know, just thinking about how I wanted to turn my life around after about a year of depression in prison. And I wrote up what I call my master plan, which was essentially like a bucket list of things that I wanted to do in my life, mm -hmm. but mostly just that my life was redeemable through education and through therapy. So I spent my entire incarceration on self-improvement. So I did 16 and a half years in prison. Uh, I was released early based on good behavior, had my sentence reduced. And so I've been out of prison now uh, and living in Baltimore and, and also splitting my time in New York for about nine years now. Wow. Awesome. Um, so, and you have a, a, a background that's very interesting. Um, I first met you at a um, organization uh, called MCE and you were speaking. And when I heard your story, I was like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta interview this guy, I gotta meet this guy. And um, later on, I found out you were into art and I didn't even know that at first. So um, the book was dope, it was, it was so interesting. But what's even more interesting is when I ask you about art um, and tell a little bit about that. So when did you first, get started with art and then when did you when did you take it to the next level I, I started getting heavily involved in art about six years ago and it started because I, I, at the time I had owned a, a contracting company and I would move art and just do all kinds of things for galleries and artists mm -hmm. a lot of my friends uh, were really cool artists I mean, I know now, I didn't know back then just how cool they were. Like I was, you know, Amy Sherrill and like Derek Adams, like all of these, uh, uh, Jeffrey Kent, all these really cool artists who I, I was around. But uh, I started going back to their studios and doing studio visits. Mm -hmm. to, when I would get off work or I was in business school back then, I, after mm -hmm. class, I'd go sit in the studios and I would ask questions. And, you know, folks like Jeffrey Kent would, would tell me, uh, the provenance, so just like the meanings behind the paintings. And it was usually, I was attracted to uh, like black culture, mm -hmm. social justice issues. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was happy. I liked colorful stuff and, mm -hmm. and big, and I just kept doing it. And about a year later, Jeffrey, as a birthday present said, I'm gonna give you five uh, artist lessons. And I said, man, I don't want no lessons for my birthday. He says, man, you come to the studio every day. You, I, you know, you're already making furniture. I was making high-end furniture back then, too. Uh, I had done, you know, some photography work. And he said, it's in you. And so we started talking about the art world. I, that's when I got introduced to it. And then it was just some cool principles that he was telling me about that I just I just fell in love with it. Wow. And then when it began, I just started painting every day, uh, uh, getting into sculptural work. And just, just I became a, a sponge. And I just started soaking up everything. So, um, so let's pause there for a moment. So in the world of diversity, equity, inclusion for viewers, um, uh, what Jeffrey did for you is called equity, right? So there was a mentorship component there. There was an apprenticeship, which is, you know, they used to be just a normal thing to do in any industry, but now it's like, we have to <laughs> put a label around okay. it. But the thing also I want the viewers to know is that, okay, so the, uh, the picture in the back and the um, sculpture is also your work. Yeah, the painting on the wall back there uh, is one of my paintings, which is a part of my my color theory. I started studying colors uh, and what co colors make you feel a certain kind of way. 
And so I started studying those. So I did a series of paintings. This is one of them. Uh, and, and these paintings, I'm, I'm happy to say, uh, are collected all around the world. So all, nice. all over. The place, so know, where so. where have you sold some of your art? Uh, so a lot of paintings in Paris, many paintings in Paris. Nice. Um, I worked in Paris, uh, just wow. set up painting. Uh, Barcelona, uh, in Madrid, mm -hmm. uh, Central and South America. I sell a lot of art in Colombia, obviously all throughout New York, Baltimore. I mean, I, I got to like champion Baltimore. <laughs> Anyone who... <laughs> Like most of the people that's dope in Baltimore, uh, you know, most likely have a Chris Wilson somewhere hanging in their house. <laughs> so I definitely done some damage in and around Baltimore, Washington, D.C., L.A., um, the youth in London, of course. Uh, so uh, it, it, it's changed my life. And mm, wow. as as, I, as the years went on, I started collecting. So I've been collecting art for about two and a half years now. Mm -hmm. And I'm more excited about that and, mm. and the beginning talk more about that. Wow. So it's so important for viewers to just see your uh, trajectory of where you've come from to where you are now. And so if someone was to, you know, to see this picture of you, uh, just, just, you know, you look like an artist and you are an artist, but, you know, but the Chris Wilson we know today is not the Chris Wilson, you know, was at the 16, 17, 18 years ago. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I don't want to spoil it for everyone who's going to go out and buy the book because it's an interview, but you speak multiple languages, which, which help you to operate in these different uh, diverse environments. Right. Absolutely. I did. I went to Italy uh, to study under this famous uh, sculptor, Salvatore Rizzuti. I stayed in like this 15th century palace, like we had a chef. Yeah. And I remember just like walking, we, we ended up in like Palermo in Sicily. And I remember like walking uh, and doing this show. And I just saw all my paintings on the wall. Mm, wow. And, and all these black folks, wow. like hundreds of black folks that like wow. showed up, you know, who heard about me. I felt so good. I remember how that felt. And just to be mm. able to get up on stage and, 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 you know, having understood the culture uh, in the language, you know, I got up on there and it's like, di conosco, la me que llamo Cristiano. And it was just like, oh, this brother like done his own work. Like, so. <laughs> It just felt so good. And I, I just love it. I love living life. And this art, this art world has just really, um, really changed me in, in a good way. So there's a couple of points before we get into why art is important, uh, why diversity is important uh, in, in, in the art world. But just an amazing story. And your world is so now that so much more diverse than it was okay. before, um, language wise, uh, art, um, you know, I know you love music. We met up in New York and we were hanging out there, which was dope. So you have all these experiences and the author and, you know, travel and all these other things. And I don't want to get off of the art kick because that's the main thing, but because of your, you know, diverse background now and experiences, it seems like you look at life now through a different lens and it sounds like also you have brought your background and in your presence, present viewpoints to the art that you make. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of people who know me well will often say that, especially most people know me throughout my life as just an entrepreneur. And I'm talking about from when I was young, selling mm -hmm. camp, or just in school or just cutting grass. Like I was always hustling and doing things. And I started my career uh, once out of prison of like making furniture, uh, getting into construction and building uh, and, and, you know, doing like storytelling and stuff like that. But so coming to get into the art world, I like to, when I study anything, you know, even languages, I want the whole market. I want to study everything, the business thing. Like, mm -hmm. like well, where, where's the money at? Like, how do we, mm -hmm. who's build? and like, how do we come up? Sure. And it's a really interesting, like finance, especially like in the art world. Um, I've mm -hmm. recently, past two years i've joined the, the board as a trustee at the new york academy of art wow. and one of the things that you know we put together off the top was a diversity and inclusion committee and mm -hmm. I, I was clear on what my goals were as a trustee i said well we don't have enough black and brown folks up at the school sure. and i need to figure out how to get them in here and i'm just letting you know i'm not going to be quiet about this so think about that mm -hmm. Right. you decide to like vote on me to be a trustee and then right. like, so so before you put chris wilson on the board you got to think about you know he's going to be a disruptor right he's going to agitate as, as as frederick Douglass would say um so 
that then um, leads to the question at hand, which is, why is it so important for diversity to be represented in the arts and, and in multiple ways? Why is it important for there to be more um, the elevation of, of Black artists, but also sitting on the board? Because it's one thing to be an artist and then to, to sit on the board where you can actually make decisions on a macro level. So I'm going to, you know, so right. just, just talk about that. Yeah. So initially, I was reluctant to join boards mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, cause I don't know, I just felt a certain kind of way, but after talking to a lot of my artist friends, they were telling me how decisions are usually made, especially in the art world, especially in these boards mm -hmm. and museums, it's mm -hmm. usually rich white dudes mm -hmm. make decisions. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of my art, artist friends and collectors sure. were, were reminding me it's important for you to be in the room right. when a decision is being made. And I've been in the room with decisions where people were going back and forth. And I'm just like, oh, hold up. Like, you know, and reminding people like why it's important for us to be diverse, why it's important. Like, and, you know, people say, well, this is the batch of artists that has submitted. So, well, how hard were we looking? <laughs> Don't tell me right. like black and brown dope people, like they're everywhere. And like, I'm going to help you find them. How hard did you look? Um, hey, so, so, so Chris, hold on, back up. So you're saying a lot of stuff, but I want to make sure people get it. So, yeah. so initially you were not sure if you wanted to be on the board, um, but once you got there, you you saw how important your representation was. Someone someone motivated you to 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 do that, and then when you got there, you were involved in that conversation, and then you can interject from a person who has a a. a, a different perspective and different background than those who are making decisions. Absolutely, absolutely. I could, I could articulate like why it was important. And I'll give you uh, an example and probably I won't give a name, but there was a young uh, painter uh, from Baltimore mm -hmm. who wanted to uh, come to New York to uh, go to art school and pursue it. And actually I would put it out there, but like it was, it was at the New York Academy of Art. But you gotta think about a lot of artists who who go to school, particularly artists of color, I guess expensive. Yeah. Right. Like who's going to pay for it? So it's very challenging for for them to get in. And then we're talking about New York, one of the most expensive country I mean, cities uh, in in the nation. It's like how do they survive? How do they do it? But it's also important that we figure out ways to make sure that you know the school is diverse and we provide these opportunities. So I'm happy to say that just by being in the room and being a champion, by the way, for uh, a young uh, painter who definitely deserves it, she's so dope, mm -hmm. uh, to give her opportunity. She ended up getting a full ride. Wow. Full ride and a stipend, she's winning awards, but like wow. it's important for people uh, to be in those rooms, to, to have a seat so that we can remind people of why, why this is important because people will forget about us. Sure, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing, so you, you was a trail break, trailblazer in a sense to get your to be in a position not just an artist and 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 getting to that place the way you did, but also uh, sitting at the tables, uh, the decision making tables in the art arena or art world in New York. Yes, right? yeah. like how dope is that? And again, if you read the book, you'll see how even more uh, amazing it is once you even more learn more about the story. So. So, so you're in the room, you're an artist, and now you're creating space for other artists to, uh, to, to come up in a sense, right? To be elevated. So, so my question is, and you said art changed your life, right? So when we think about the impact of the increase of diversity in the art arena, what does that do for the art, um, the art world? It's not even industry, the art world. What does that do for it? How does that increase the quality? So I'll say, so it's a few, it's a few like things to like think about. So first, I, I need to acknowledge that I understand that some uh, African-American artists would take offense to being referred to as an African-American artist versus just being an artist. Like, mm, he, good, like good point. It's, a, you, you, it's a black artist or whatever. And it's like, you should be an artist, a dope artist or whatever, but we shouldn't put the colors on it, right? It's personal, but it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. And right now, currently, all the things we we've always been dope, by the way. So we've always had our stuff stolen and, and appropriated, or whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah. Um, but lately, 
lately, uh, like everyone's collecting uh, art from us and, and, and we deserve it finally, right? But one of the things I've been really paying attention to and what a lot of my uh, artist friends of color have been like talking about is like, it's not, we don't just want to um, have our work appreciated. Mm -hmm. Like we, like I've been encouraging like all of my artist friends, we've been trading, we've been collecting art and mm -hmm. we've been thinking about the, the, the money behind it, which is really important. And I, I really wanna like dive into this because the art world is essentially a construct that has been created. And if you, if you look at the numbers, there's only like 3,000, less than 3,000 like really uh, like serious art collectors in the world. Wow. And this is 63 to $64 billion worth of art transactions happen every year. Most of it happens in New York, by the way. Wow. I mean, the truth is, it's controlled by mostly rich white men. And the thing that a lot of my artist friends and I, you know, we talk about and we think about and why it's important for us to sit on board seats, uh, to buy each other's work, sure. is because you can even look at critics. Critics, it was a young person I knew who had, uh, it was a white guy, critic came in mm -hmm. and young artist was uh, drawing uh, a woman. It was a, 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 a gay woman, it was her friend. Mm -hmm. She drew and the, the critic said, this don't look like no black woman. And like artists like take their work serious, Cr like critiques could like make or break a person or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was devastating for her. Mm -hmm. But like she was so angry about it and was like, how, how does this person get to define what a black woman like should look like? Sure. And so that's the other thing, that's the other like responsibilities um, as artists is we have to educate and we have to be bold and right. confident about our work. And mm -hmm. it's, it's our body of work. And it's like, even though like someone can buy it, it will never be their work. They just become the caretakers. It's our work. It's our story that we perpetuate and put out in the world. So I just try to remind artists to think about that because it's important. Yeah, I wanted to go back to a point you made about uh, not being considered just a Black artists i've heard that before like i don't want to be a, a black hr prof professional a black leader and some people do but i was watching uh, a documentary on jim hendrix the other uh last night and that was one of the things that he like he was like i want to just be a musician i want to be universal yeah. um so i think it is important to acknowledge that um but so as you talk about how it's important for uh us to be aware of how as, as African-American artists that we have to educate people. So now let's talk in the last uh, couple of minutes that we have to the, the fact that, uh, or what is what are the uh, obstacles to getting more um, diversity in the arts, uh, the art world? So, so some of the obstacles are like, when I took a step back and just started really analyzing the art market, like who's really, went in, you might have an artist who sells a painting for $10,000 mm -hmm. to a collector, probably like a, let's say a, a white collector, they sit on that painting, they go huddle up with their friends, say, I think this is the new hot artist, mm -hmm. let's, let's take this painting to auction, let's bump mm -hmm. up the, let's force appreciate Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. This is benefiting them. So like mm -hmm. the painting goes to auction, it sells for $200,000, it's a $10,000 painting. That mm -hmm. artist who sold it doesn't benefit from that. And then these, these collectors, like everyone who's brought the art from this artist, all the value of all of their art goes up now. And then if they want, they can donate it to a museum and get the tax. Mm -hmm. it. They can keep it in their family and pass it on to their children. And they mm -hmm. teach their children about like wealth generation. They can mm -hmm. borrow against the value of the painting. Can you say and that one more time? Can you say that one more time? <laughs> they can borrow off the value of the painting. I got to, like, this is a $30,000 painting right here. Like, I can own it. I can say, all right, it's insured. And I can go to the bank and get some money and, then, and, and start a business. That, that That's really interesting. I think that's important. And I'm not talking about that enough. Right. And so this is something that I feel like I have to champion, particularly like my black and brown artists and mm -hmm. vibing. Like, we, yes, make our art. But we should be collecting art. Mm -hmm. We should be even some of like everything shouldn't be for sale. We should be strategic on who we sell to. Mm -hmm. We want to be sell. I sell to people who like, you know, preferably good people, people that can champion stuff mm -hmm. I believe in. And so that's what I want to do. It's not just about the money with me. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important for us to do that. But I want us to win. And in the art world, at the end of the day, in my opinion, it's the collectors that win. Wow. 
So we go so much deeper into this topic, but with time is limited. Um, so in order for us to overcome the obstacles of bringing more diversity, it sounds like we need to have more people like yourself sitting on the boards, more, you said more collectors. We need to educate people at all levels of the, in the art world and outside, and also understand that art is a business and it's about um, equity and, and, and wealth and growing in that way. Um, and so it, um, any, any last words, so I have to close the session on because of time, but it's so good. Any last words in terms of what, what you would want the viewers to know about diversity in the arts? I, I, would, I would want the viewers to know that the, the art world isn't as diverse enough mm -hmm. um, and it is controlled by mostly uh, rich white, white men. Uh, they control it. They, they sit on the boards of the museums. They run it. They run the galleries. Mm. And in order for us, it's, it's no different from politics. In order for us to have equity and for things to be diverse, we have to also take on those roles as the gallerists, as mm. the collectors. We need to sit on the, uh, the boards of these museums. Hell, we need to be making our own museums. And some All people, right. are, that's what we need to be doing. Wow. And, we need, and we also, we need to be studying the contracts and studying yeah. Around it and teaching our children about it. Like a lot of my friends who are successful sometimes tell me, man, I just don't know, man. I'm intimidated by like the art world. I just don't get it. Like we got to get out of our comfort zone and learn about it because it's beautiful. Well, after this uh, segment, I'm going to be hitting you up to talk to you about <laughs> where are the latest, uh, where, where the um, the art venues that I can come and hang out in New York and uh, check out. So um, how can uh, people find you, Chris? People can find me through my how website. How can they purchase the book? <laughs> yes. So my book is sold everywhere books are sold. Uh, I uh, encourage folks, especially in Baltimore, to go through the Ivy Book uh, Store. Is, uh, like, but um, I will also say that you go uh, follow me on Instagram, Chris Wilson Baltimore. I'm always painting and traveling. And uh, also my foundation, which I'm doing a lot of work through, the Chris Wilson Foundation. And I've raised over three hundred thousand uh, dollars to donate my book uh, to folks mostly in prisons and schools. I just got back from Rikers Island this morning, uh, giving out uh, two hundred uh, copies of my book. And so I, I would encourage people to read the book, leave me some reviews, and share it with someone who I feel like my story will uh, inspire or motivate. And we will also put the link at the bottom of the video. Thank you, Chris Wilson.